The frock is going to take a really long time. I can see how um, one may be frustrated doing this because... I am very frustrated doing this. Um, I'm just saying guys, do not have high expectations for this. It is very ugly. Hello everyone. I was going through YouTube to see what clay things we should make today and I saw this video by Paloma the Peach. I hope you guys have heard about clay pins. They're pins except they're made out of clay. And usually I make them completely out of clay, but we are going to follow her tutorial for this, which might involve paint, but whether or not it does, I'm very excited to make them because they look super cute. And let's begin. This is quite a long video, so I will just be cutting to the parts that I find that are most important and most helpful to you. Hello everyone. So as you can tell, I'm going to be showing you guys my clay pin process in this video because you know, sometimes people want to make their own designs or maybe you have your own store that you're wanting to add clay pins to. Starting off, I use the original Sculpey Polymer Clay, just plain Sculpey Clay. I don't use any colors because I prefer to paint over it. Starting off with any polymer clay, you want to make sure that you are massaging it and working it before you start making your pins because out of the box, it is kind of stiff and difficult to work with, so you just want to keep massaging it for about five minutes until it's nice and soft. Okay, so let's start off with massaging our clay. So we don't need as much clay as her in the video because we are only making three pins. She mentioned that the clay is stiff when you first take it out. However, it is summer and it is really hot in my house, so my clay is already extremely soft, like too soft. So let's continue the video. And then you want to start rolling it out. I used to use a bunch of random stuff to roll out my polymer clay for a long time, but this little rolling pin is from the Sculpey brand and it's meant for polymer clay and it just makes the process a lot easier and a lot faster. I like to roll it out to about between eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch of thickness. That's really up to preference, but you don't want to make them too thin or too thick because you don't want to make them flimsy or too heavy as a pin. Okay, so let's go ahead and roll our clay. I feel like you guys have a pretty clear understanding of how thick the clay pin should be. Okay, I feel like this is a good thickness, and now we will continue watching the video. I bought this cookie cutting set from Amazon because having these shapes really helps keep consistent how much clay I'm using for each pin, and it helps with the consistency of the shape too. So you'll see in a minute that I don't necessarily make circle clay pins. Having that circle shape makes it much easier to create the shapes that I want. Okay, so she uses a circular mold cutter thingy majiggy. So this is the circular cookie cutter I have. It is the only size I have, so hopefully it will work. Okay, don't you think this is like too small for a clay pin? So what I'm going to do is take some household objects, for example, the silic silicon, silicone, silica something mold right here, and it has a circle on the base. So what I'm going to do is just trace out the outline. So press it in so there's an outline and I will just manually cut that out with an exacto knife. This is the size of my circles. So according to her, she makes hers a quarter of an inch to something thick and I feel like this is a quarter of an inch. So I feel like they are thick enough. And now we will see what she will do with these circles. So now that I have cut out some of the circles, I am shaping them right now into a little frog shape. So I have these tools that I bought off of Amazon, the little polymer clay tool set. You can find so many on there. I did recently buy those because for a while I was literally just using my fingers and that works perfectly fine. But I find that these make the process again a little bit faster, a little bit easier. So I like to use every part of the little tools. So the little silicone part at the top works for softening. There's a little dotting tool at the, on the other side. And I even use like the little handle part to create the shape and I, I see so she shapes it with her tools or your fingers if you don't have any tools I have some tools that I barely use but I don't know if I'll end up using them this does not look like something I would use so she makes quite some designs in total 
And I think my favorites are the strawberry. And I don't know if you guys have seen those little egg ones before, but I really like those, so I'm gonna make an egg too. Oh, I really wanna make a mushroom. Okay, change of plans. We're gonna make a, a frog, a mushroom, and a egg. So as we know, she shaped her little circles with these tools, dotting tools, silicone tools, all those tools, and your fingers. I'm going to go ahead and shape all of my pieces, and I will show you guys how they look. Okay, so I finished making the clay shapes. So let me show you guys. This is the egg shape. This is frog and this is mushroom. So now let's see what she does after she shapes her pins. So now that we have all of our shapes, we can start baking the clay pins now. You wanna be sure to preheat your oven to 275 degrees Fahrenheit and bake them for about 13 minutes. So the package says 15 minutes, I do 13 minutes, but you wanna make sure to keep checking up on those pins because you don't want them to burn. I like to lay down a little piece of parchment paper underneath the pins so they don't stick at all to your pan or ruin it in case they burn. So now we're gonna go ahead and bake according to her directions and I'll be right back. So I finished baking these, all three designs, and I also took a, what's it called? It was like the electric sanding machine and I sanded down the dust and any like sharp bumps on it. So let's go ahead and see what Paloma has to say after we bake. So now that our pins are nice and smoothed out, we can start painting. And this is my favorite part, but it is also the most time consuming part. This part takes about two days for me because there are so many layers of paint that you have to let dry. I personally use the Holbein brand acrylic gouache. You want to make sure to use acrylic gouache because, so gouache in itself is a mixture of like acrylic and watercolor paint. So it has the thickness and opacity of acrylic paint, but with gouache, you can reactivate it and kind of thin it out to give it that watercolor effect. So if you, got, if you get normal gouache paint, it'll just continuously be reactivated and it'll be really easy to be muddy and you won't be able to layer different colors on top of each other. So if you get acrylic gouache, once it dries down, it will not move, it will not be reactivated. So it makes it much easier to work with. And now you can enjoy a few clips of some painting time lapses which I know I really like. Okay so she says acrylic gouache but um, what I have is just acrylic so we'll just be using acrylic. I know she said not to use watercolor but she never said anything about acrylic so that is what we will be using. Some yellow. Oh let's start off with the mushroom. Mushroom sounds very easy all we have to do is paint the top part red. So let's take our red paint and have a coat of acrylic going across the top and we're gonna paint the edges a little too okay perfect so while this dries we will go ahead and paint on the yellow for the egg now we are going to take our egg shape and we are going to paint on a little circle of egg eggs come in all shapes and sizes so this egg is going to be a little bit um, bigger than the others but that means he will have a big smile so here is my yellow. Yes, yeah, very nice. And while that dries, I just realized that you guys can't see my colors, and now you can. So we are not going to waste anything. We are going to take our yellow and our green, and we're going to mix it together into a nice light green. And now we will paint the entire surface of this frog green. She holds it up like one finger on the back and one with her nail, but my nails are the shortest things ever, so that's gonna be a problem. Um, this might need a repaint in a few minutes. It looks like the red on my mushroom is basically dried, and now I will go ahead and take some white and draw some mushrooms on here. Okay, I draw my spots. They're a little, they're a little crusty. I think having a little watery consistency would be very helpful. That gouache. Yeah, let's look back at our egg. It is dry, the yellow part is dry. So instead of using a paintbrush, I'm gonna use a dotting tool for the eyes and the smile because I feel like that is so much cleaner. Dipping it in the black and I'm gonna dot on the eyes. Okay, yeah, this is so much cleaner. Now I'm gonna use the smaller dotting tool and draw a mouth. I'm gonna clean off the dotting tool and start drawing on the blush. Um, I hope you guys really like the wonky pins because mine is definitely wonky. So as for our clay frog, it is still drying up, but we do not care. We need to save time here. Do a nice 
light green, lime green, and now we will go ahead and paint on the green. With art, you have to just find things at home that you can solve your problems with. The frog is basically almost dry. So we are just going to start right here, the little eyeball. Dip it in black and I'm going to dot an eye. Honestly, I could have just used Sharpie. It would have been so much more convenient because this does not look good. This is just looks like evil frog or something. So this is the frog. This is the mushroom. This is the egg. I'm just going to show you guys how I attach the pins. They flip over the pin so it's on its face. Take a drop of super glue in the center and then stick the pin backing on top. And do the same for the other ones. So I will do that on the frog when it's dried and then I will glaze with BB resin. Thank you Paloma for the tutorial and I will show you guys the end product. So these are the fully glazed pins. Here's the mushroom. The white is not perfect, but the UV resin smoothed out the surface. Here's the egg. Face is a little ugly, but still smooth. And here is the frog. I really tried. For now, they will be living on my bulletin board until they get adopted on my secret shop. So thank you to Paloma the Peach for the tutorial. I really appreciate it. And I hope you guys have an amazing day. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.